Welcome back folks. Today we're gonna to teach you how to disassemble a Rotax 951 engine. As most of you know, I have rebuilt a Grey Ghost, also known as the 1997.5 GSXL. When I saw someone parting one out, I had to get my hands on a, another core. You know, my goal is to rebuild this engine and to have just in case I need to drop a new engine in if my other one fails. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to disassemble this engine the correct way. What I like about these original 951 engines is they came from the factory with more aggressive exhaust port timing. What that means is during the exhaust stroke, those gases are traveling down with the piston and they're gonna reach the exhaust port a little bit sooner because the port is machined at a higher angle and allows those gases to, to reach that port a little bit sooner. The next year they decided to tone it down with the port timing. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Here's a, a top end that was re-sleeved by SBT and the sleeves they use have machined exhaust ports that are more like the later 951, so not as aggressive. If you take a look at the angle of this machined area, if we increase that angle, those exhaust gases are gonna reach this exhaust port a little bit sooner. It's also gonna change how your ski responds when accelerating. First thing we have to do is take off this dry shaft cup. The next thing we're gonna do is take this PTO flywheel off. Before we do that, we need to take a rag and shove it in this exhaust port so that it catches the cylinder. Um, we don't want this PTO flywheel rotating when we are unbolting that. Um, now, this engine is already locked up, so it's rusted in there, it's not, our, it's not moving. So um, this shirt, we still wanna put in there just in case it does move when we remove this bolt. To remove it, we need a half inch wrench. We need a three quarter socket and we need a breaker bar, which I use this uh, two foot pipe. I want you to take notice that I left the engine bracket on. This is gonna allow me to prop the engine and hold it uh, when I provide leverage and try to rotate this bolt off. Now it's time to pull our PTO flywheel. We have attached our, our flywheel puller. Um, you can go to any auto parts store and get a, a steering wheel puller or flywheel puller like this. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to get out my blowtorch and heat this thing up so that it slides off. Same process for removing the magneto flywheel. We're gonna stick a t-shirt in here. Again, this engine is locked up, so it may not move regardless. We're gonna take a half inch wrench with the breaker bar to this nut to get it off. <clears throat> Now 
Next we're going to take our flywheel puller tool. Uh, it's an interesting looking tool. Uh, we're going to take this end, we're going to screw it on to the front of that crankshaft. You have this screw on the inside, it's going to press against that, that crankshaft and it's going to allow that magneto flywheel to slide right off. So the next thing to do is to remove the top end. The whole top end is rusted. The pistons aren't moving. Instead of pounding at those pistons and the cases right away, we are going to spray a penetrating lubricant, let it sit overnight. We're gonna come back and, and go at it with a wood block and a mallet to dislodge those pistons from the cylinder walls. And then, you know, hopefully get to that bottom end. So we let oil sit overnight in the cylinders, just to try to lubricate that and maybe free it up a little bit. So what I've been doing the last 10 minutes is taking a mallet, using an implement like a wood block or PVC pipe. And what I've been doing is just pounding the cylinder. Anytime you have an engine that was submerged in water and it's locked up like this, it's gonna be really hard to get these pistons loose from the cylinders, but you just gotta work at it. So we are making some progress even though you might not think it um we have the jugs starting to form a crease uh and separate from the case In order to split the case, you're gonna to need to get these pistons off. Sometimes the C-clips are rusted up real good in there. Uh, you're gonna to have to get something sharp and pointy and you know pound it in and try to dislodge those C-clips out. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to release those dowels from the connecting rod. And don't forget to wear eye protection when you do this. Now it's time to remove the dowel pin from the connecting rod. Sometimes they're really difficult to remove, so I like to use an old socket extension. I also like to put a t-shirt against this piston just in case, you know, when I go to bang this, it doesn't, uh, you know, hit the, uh, the case surface there.
next thing we got to do is pry these case halves open. We're going to take these uh, little recess areas, we're going to uh, stick some in there and, and wiggle it up and down and try to dislodge the cases. So our case is now split open. Our drive shaft and our counterbound shaft are out in the open. You can tell they are not looking good, which is expected. We actually have water in the CV shaft reservoir, but all in all, the cases look pretty darn good. The surfaces look clean. Once we get this rust all cleaned up, we're gonna get the paint stripped off. It's gonna look brand new. Well, there you have it. That is how you disassemble a Rotax 951 engine. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, God bless. Thank you.